Demonstration of how to set up the Dracon extruder. Now, start off with, you need to start with your motor and your small gear. The small gear will be tight, uh, and I mean it will be tight, so it may be a little too tight, but it's actually designed that way to make sure it does not move on the shaft while, while it's in place. Um, you need to push it down directly in line with the actual extruder base. Um, your bolts in your extruder base will vary in length depending on how, how thick your mount is. I'm using 16 mil here. If you if you're mounting directly to the motor, it's uh, 12 mil. Uh, so basically, next up is your large gear and your M5 by 40 bolt. Uh, that's a hex head bolt. Now. We, just as a note on gears, at least one of them really should be printed in nylon, which this is. Uh, both of them prefer preferably, uh, just for makes for easier and free running. But first off, and also a note about the bolt, sorry, you need to file a flat onto it to stop oops, to stop your Mark 8 gear uh, shifting around the shaft when it's actually in the uh, in the extruder. So start off with. 65ZZ uh, then your Mark 8 gear make sure your grub screw is pointing down towards the gear and of course it's decided to uh, come out and I've just lost that in there So, just going to screw it in. Also, a note about the grub screw. If you've got a long grub screw, this will not work. It has to be flush with the with your uh, um, with the with the gear itself. Also, needs to be make sure it's tight. As that should really go without saying. Next up. Printed washer, uh, printed brushing again. These should be really printed in nylon, but you can use PETG or ABS. Um, they will be tight, you need to screw them onto the shaft. Once it's past the thread, it will push down. Now, you make sure there is no slop in that gear, and there is actually slop in the gear, so what I need to do the gear, sorry bearing, is if I can actually undo this because the, uh, I've had this off too many times, the grub screw is sort of dying as the as the other key. So basically you want to be making sure that's tight and down but you still can move the bearing, so you can still move the bearing. So, so and then make sure it's tight. Basically, this in, that brushing also ensures that um, your grub screw does not move. Uh, also, as you can see now, there is no slop in that bearing at all. That goes into your motor housing and just pushes directly in. This motor housing is one, one behind the GitHub. On the one on the GitHub, there is actually a 0.1 tolerance in the actual uh, seat to allow it to stand off a bit further. Now, quick note about the motor housing: uh, I'm using the one with uh, with a spindle mount in the middle. Uh, idle, so your idle mount in the middle. Uh, but so basically, if you're using the the MR95CZs. Uh, they mount on your motor spindle. Yeah. 
So, I was put that in the wrong wrong idler. This is the this is an older, older version of the idler. That's just that's recently come out. That's just not on the GitHub yet, but it will be uh, as soon as I finish this video. So, M3 by 10 volt uh, socket cap into that. 623 is easy. You notice it's loose. Then on top of that, M3 washer to pack it. It's loose for a reason, it just makes it easy to get everything in and I've just lost, lost the washer. So and that should just screw directly into the plastic, into the into the printed part. And um, there we go. It's just been really freely. You don't want to, you know, there's a, there is a little bit of slack in there, but that's fine. So that. Let's go and spring. Fits directly onto onto the, your uh, motor housing, uh, onto your body. Now that just should just fit down. And you notice there is a bit of bit of play there. That's fine. So just as a double check, make sure your idle bearing lines up. Next up, another 65 ZZ bearing on the top. Press that home. Your idler spring and M4 by M4 bolt. Oh, the length of it, sorry. Um, basically, that just locates into the um, into the seat in the idle arm. You should just be able to push this home, but sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly. if you've got the bolt not quite right not, not quite right and that just seats nicely uh, also in the later version of the, the body this sits a little bit lower you'll notice there's a little bit of a bend in the spring there but I've fixed that so that's now been fixed next up it's your filament guide uh, you'll notice there is a spot on the top of it that goes facing up. Uh, I'm doing it for Bowden, so I've got a uh, groove bearing here. That just sits on there. Then your cover. This goes, locates right over the top. You may notice with this, there's, there's a little bit of a gap there which I've just uh, which is fixed uh, there are, there's also some tolerance that I've added in this is an older cover as well um, but it still works so the M3 by 30s just screw home Doesn't matter which order you put them in. My preference for actually putting these in is to do the two around the coupler first, then finally do the one over the over the tension tensioner. And my nut is not quite there. Basically, with your uh, when you when you're building this, make sure you put the put your 
the nuts in properly, else you end up with things like this. So I need to get a screw right in there and push it up. Which is better with it the long gear, isn't it? There we go. Basically the M3 by 30 volts are just long enough to hit the to hit the nuts in there. My nut trap is a little, little, little loose. Oh, the fringe is a bit too uh, printed tight enough. There is a lot of tolerance on these on these bolt holes, but sometimes my printers like to print a bit tight, so which is not a bad thing when it comes to holes for bolts. I recommend with these uh, parts you print them at high infill, around uh, somewhere between 50 and 70 percent infill. Uh, this one. This particular bolt doesn't actually bolt into the base, however, it does actually just go straight um, into the base to stop it from spinning around. And the actual bolt, the actual nut on the back of the body is, is for that particular one there. And finally, let's check, it, check the idler. Lovely. Nice and smooth. The nut traps are actually. Oh, I had loads of mine, sorry. There we go. Next up, another printed brushing, you get nylon. You can see that moves fairly freely now. But we want to just screw the brushing on. Basically, you can see this has been used previously because there's a there's a round mark in it. I had a washer there, and that was started to screw screw into it. That's why I've actually gone over to these, and it also stops running, uh, gets rid of any slop in the bolt. Um, so basically, you want it. So it's fairly easy to move that, but not absolutely tight. And then just uh, M M5 lock nut, and preparation of the gear, didn't get a pair of pliers, and just hold and hold your bolt. Just if you've got a, it, it should be a. Size of these, are, I think they're they're an eight mil bolt. Uh, I can't find my eight mil spanner at the moment, so a pair of pliers doesn't need to be super tight, just enough to put everything down. If it starts jamming up, you can just loosen it up a bit. There we go. One Draconic Shrewder. <laughs>